Hello, everyone. Welcome to the November 8th, uh, 2022 meeting of the Williamsburg Area School District Board of Directors. Let's stand for the pledge. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Nice to see a nice uh, big crowd here tonight. Um, we are missing one person, but let's do roll call anyway. Mrs. Fortney? Here. Dr. Royer? Here. Mrs. Miles? Here. Mrs. Strike? Yeah, here. Mr. Marvin? Here. Mrs. Zimmerman? Here. Mrs. Sullivan? Here. Mr. Smith is absent. Mr. Here. Mr. Smith is supposed to be on virtual. Oh, I'm yes. here. Oh, oh, there, there he is. is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And I'm here. Okay, uh, for the agenda, we have one addition and that is under B after presentations, we will be going to a hopefully very, very brief executive session. So that would be one change. Uh, with that change, do we have a, a move to approve the agenda? Move to approve. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Uh, on to the minutes. We have a motion to approve the minutes. Move to approve. Second. Any questions about our minutes from our last meeting? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Superintendent report, Dr. Klein. I just want to make the board aware that uh, we, the uh, First Start Partnerships um, uh, for Franklin County is inviting the board to a uh, early childhood um, uh, kickoff program in Greencastle on Thursday morning. Well, it's Thursday, 11.30 to 1. It is uh, to promote uh, Greencastle's uh, push and in, uh, initiative for their early childhood center to kind of do what we have done here. So that's a, that's a good sign and a good thing for Franklin County. So. Anyhow, you were invited, so you're, uh, you're welcome to uh, register. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Ms. Um, Kuzer, no public comment tonight? Okay. Um, that means then we'll move into presentations. Dr. Sternheim, you gonna talk about that or who's doing that? Mr. McMahon? Um, so Somebody? I believe we're going to begin with Dr. Kopko. Dr. Kopko. Um, we're going to be recognizing um, a number of our learners for academic and athletic achievements this evening. Okay. I'm very excited to be here to present. Um, we had four learners that had qualified for the National Rural and Small Town Award from College Board. Um, and to make everyone aware, uh, those learners had to achieve a 3.5 GPA or higher and had to have earned a PSAT score that was in the top 10% of testers across the country. So again, we had four individuals. Um, first one is Evan Stein. Oh. Okay, next up is Madison Warren. Next is Megan Miller. And last but not least is Riley Crom. Okay, and again, congratulations from WASH's administration on that achievement, everyone. Thanks. Okay, up next we have Mrs. Sawicki will be presenting a series of awards for the REACH program. Good evening. I would first like to thank you, Dr. Klein, Dr. Sternerheim, and members of the board for allowing me the time and opportunity to present to you this evening. I'm very proud to be here tonight representing the Waynesboro Area School District Gifted Program. 
And I will be presenting to you tonight the people and the students who have worked so hard to make last year's 21-22 school year and our academic competition such a success. Thank you for recognizing them tonight with these certificates. So first, I would like to recognize the people who have helped contribute to the program over the past couple of years. Not here with us tonight is a man named David Souders. I don't know if any of you know him. He's the founder and president of Sesco Industries in Mon Alto. I would like to sincerely thank Dave for his monetary sponsorship of our Science Olympiad teams over the last couple of years. He's graciously donated $500 per year to our program to help for purchasing all the additional supplies and things that are required by the 46 events that we compete in every year. Here with us tonight are two gentlemen, John Forrester and Tim Ewing from JLG Industries in Hagerstown, Maryland. I'd like to ask them to come down. Both John and Tim are perennial volunteers for our engineering students for both the Science Olympiad and the Pennsylvania's Governor's Challenge teams. They have attended weekly after school practice sessions with me in the months of November through March for at least the past six years. And this is an approximation. They're with me all the time. Um, I did the math today, and this equates to close to 200 volunteer hours to help our students in the school district. And without each of these gentlemen, I couldn't help teach the students to successfully build, program, or test without their expertise and guidance. So I would like to thank you, Tim and John. nice to see some new faces here. So um, I've done this before, but I just kind of want to break it down a little bit for those of you that are new to the board is exactly what we do. So of course, most importantly, we're here tonight to recognize the students for all their hard work and dedication and how it's resulted in recognition beyond the walls of our own Waynesboro Area School District. Just like our gifted athletes, our gifted scholars need to be given opportunities to learn practice and then compete against other students and teams in their areas of expertise. Our students compete regionally in competitions across the curriculum spectrum. Believe me, if there's a subject they're interested in studying, there is a regional competition for them to apply their knowledge in. I just wanna list these for you. There are 11 of them. So number one is the scholastic writing competition in which there are 11 different categories ranging anywhere from critical essay to short stories to journalism. Number two is scholastic art, where there are 16 categories. You go from drawing and painting to architecture to video game design. Number three is National History Day. Last year's theme was conflict and compromise. And there are five different ways you can show your expertise in those areas of studies, including exhibits, you can do a performance or you can create your own website. Number four, we have Science Olympiad for which we have two teams. We have a division B, which encompasses the middle school and division C, which is the high school. Both teams compete in 23 individual events every year. These range anywhere from disease detectives where we kind of have our own little CDC experts, uh, any engineering from flight to detector building and studies like anatomy and physiology. Number five is PA Media and Design. There are six categories, and this encompasses programming, documentaries, animation, and such. One of our new areas of expertise is the stock market game, where the students learn how to research and actually start with $100,000 at the beginning of the year, and they invest in stocks, ETFs, mutual funds, bonds, and learn how to do financial planning. We have the Math Olympiad every year at the middle school where we have five yearly contests. We have the PA Math League version of that at the high school where you go from five contests to six throughout the year. We do the Thinking Cap Quiz Bowl with both the middle school and the high school. And of course the high school participates in the Brain Busters, which I'm very happy to say we're going back to this year. We film on December 17th. And last but not least, we have the PA's Governor's Challenge which is a yearly competition where the students are encouraged to create a STEM-based project that's going to make the lives of Pennsylvanians better. I'm very proud to say in the first six of the 11 competitions that I just mentioned to you, Waynesboro either placed, 
medaled or won in the regional competitions and advanced to the state level competition. This is our most successful year to date, 21-22. Imagine having six teams go to states. It is phenomenal and it's over 50% of our competitions that we uh, participate in every year. Rich Rosen, for those of you that don't know, the director of Brain Buster asks me every year when I take my team up, what's my goal as a teacher? And my answer never changes. It's to teach a president or a Supreme Court justice or somebody that's going to go beyond Wayne's Bar and do amazing things. And he always kind of laughs at me and says it's a lofty goal, but I don't think it is. So tonight I will be presenting the students by grade level and I'll be announcing their events and their projects. I ask that they come forward and remain up front until all the students have been called. So we're gonna start, last year we had some sixth graders participate for the first time on our Science Olympiad team. And it doesn't look like these are in order. So maybe I'll just read these as they come. I thought they were gonna be by grade level but they are not. So I'm just gonna announce the students and if they can come up, please. First, we have Brenna Hollingsworth. She participated on our regional science Olympia team in three events. It was part of our state qualifying science Olympia team as a sixth grader. Great. Next, we have Anissa Minnick. Anissa won first place at the regional PA media and design competition for her documentary entitled The Pandemic of Mental Health. And she was a state uh, competitor this year as well. Next, we have Addison Calloway. Addison was a multiple winner for me this year. Um, in scholastic art and writing, she won an honorable mention for journalism called The Sexism of Dress Codes. She won two honorable mentions for her photography. And then she was on the Science Olympiad team at the regional level, meddling in bioprocess lab, and then was also one of our state Science Olympiad team members. Next is Aiden Coulter. Aiden was one of our high school science Olympia participants at the regional competition. And I also have his twin, Emma Coulter. She also participated in three events for our high school team. <clears throat> this is one of my graduating seniors, but his brother's here tonight. So maybe I can give him his stuff as well. Um, Evan Swanson graduated in May, but he was one of our Science Olympia competitors at the high school. He medaled fourth in detector building, which required building, testing, and coding on the computer all in one. And then he also placed second in our inaugural year of the stock market game. He was second regionally and 27th place in the state for last year. Kyle, come up and get your brother's certificate. <laughs> Another one of my graduating seniors was Karis Cox. Again, she was a double winner. She had an honorable mention award in scholastic art and writing for a poetry called Lessons in Loss, a very touching poem about losing her grandmother. And she came in first place in the stock market game last year and 16th place in the state. We have Caden Shakru. Caden was one of our members on our B Division Science Olympiad team, and he medaled in two different events out of the three he participated in. He was second place in Code Busters and fourth place in something called the Ping Pong Parachute. Next, we have Landon Kipe, and I see he's here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Landon was another one of my sixth graders, 
and he competed at the regional science olympiad and medaled in fourth place in ornithology and then was also one of our state level competitors and he competed in two events there <laughs> Next, we have Kyle Swanson, so he's still up here. <laughs> Again, this was a double competitor, first in the Regional Science Olympiad, where Kyle medaled in both Code Busters in second place and Crime Busters fourth place. And then he competed at the state level for the Science Olympiad. And the biggest medal that he's wearing, and I know he has many on, <laughs> is the seventh place state medal that the team won for Code Busters. Next, we have Kieran Clay. Kieran was a second place finisher in National History Day. Um, he created a documentary called The Right to Rock. And if you remember last year's theme was conflict and compromise. And Kieran is very musically minded. And this was all about the PMRC going to Washington DC and putting warning labels on music. Um, we also did a first-hand interview with a member of the Kicks band to get a first-hand experience with that. And so he took that uh, documentary and went to the state level as well. Next, we have Josh Webb. I don't think he's here tonight either, but he was one of our high school um, competition members on the Science Olympiad team. One of the seniors from last year is Josh Skirman. And of course he's not here this evening, but he was a dual winner. Again, Scholastic Writing Competition, an honorable mention and critical essay, euthanasia, the legalization of assisted suicide. And then he participated on the C Division Science Olympiad team and won fourth place in detector building with Evan Swanson. Do I have the Roonies together? We're gonna to do both Roonies together. First, I have Jaden Rooney. So Jaden was one of the members of my B Division Science Olympiad team. He won two medals. He won a medal in Crime Busters and then a medal in Anatomy and Physiology. Give me a second, I apologize. My, it's here somewhere. It was the last one. We also have his younger brother, Tyler. Uh, Tyler also competed at the regional competition for Science Olympiad in two events. And then he was one of our state level competitors. And he was also a member of our seventh place Code Busters team in the state of Pennsylvania. Like to call up Mary Schlotterbeck. She was a member of the B Division Science Olympiad team competing in three different events and she placed fourth in anatomy and physiology. Next I have Madison Warren. Madison was already up here once for a recognition but she also participates in my program. Last year, she won a silver key for her poem called What Comes With Growth. Um, this year, she's had a lot of success. She's a LenFest scholar, and we're going to a awards banquet on next Thursday night. She's also a finalist for the QuestBridge Scholarship. And right now, out of 651 kids in the stock market game, she's number 10. She's made $11,000 in this risky market that we have right now. <laughs> Does so she want a job? <laughs> Next is Will Yost. Will participated with the B Division team at the Science Olympiad, meddling fourth in ping pong parachute. And then he also went to the state level competition and competed in those same two events. TJ Cox. 
TJ is another Science Olympiad competitor at the B division. He competed in three events at the regional competition. And then, bless his heart, I had this boy in every different event at every different time last year. And he just rolls with the punches and does a great job. But he got this seventh place state medal to bring home from the state competition in Co Busters. We have Nevea Diebrick. Nevea is a dual winner as well. Nevea got a writing silver key in her critical essay. It was a response to Ray Bradbury's The Velt. If you've ever read that short story, we read that in eighth grade. Then she was on the B Division Science Olympiad Regional Team, actually doing five different events for me, which is a full day. There's only six slots, and she was out five of the six for me. So again, worked incredibly hard and meddled in two different events, Bioprocess Lab and Sounds of Music. And then she went to the state level competition with us as well at the Science Olympiad. Peter Childers, I don't believe Peter's here. He emailed me and said that he could not make it. Peter was a competitor at the B Division Science Olympiad team, meddling in two events as well, Code Busters and Sounds of Music. We have a graduating senior, Rachel Bedell. She was a scholastic art and writing winner with her honorable mention in another, another critical essay. Her essay was entitled, Nature to be Used as a Criminal Defense. Next, I have Macy Bittner. Macy is another one of my sixth graders that competed in the B Division Science Olympiad team. She did three events at the regional competition and then also competed in those events at the state level competition. We have another graduating senior, Megan Childers. Megan was a dual winner last year, winning a silver key in critical essay called The Ethics of Data Mining. And then she was always a Science Olympiad competitor for me as well and competed on the C Division Science Olympiad team. We have Gabby Strasser. Gabby is a I'm going to say prolific writer. She is a beautiful writer. And if you ever get a chance to read any of her work, you will consider yourself lucky. Um, she won an honorable mention last year for her flash fiction piece called Lucky. And she just continues to write beautiful work. And we are submitting several pieces this year. Izzy Bupp. Izzy did a competition that I did not mention. She was very, very interested in studying World War II and the Holocaust, and she's also very artistically minded. So we put those two pieces together and she competed in a Holocaust education uh, essay and um, art contest. And she won an honorable mention for her piece that highlighted one of the survivors of the Holocaust. Next, I have Isaac Pappas. Isaac was another sixth grader that competed for the first time at the uh, B Division Science Olympiad. He did two events for me, meddling fourth place in Ornithology, and then he was a state competitor as well in that event. Next is Jaden Leach. Jaden, um, he competed in the PA Media and Design Competition last year as well, whereas Anissa did documentary, he did graphic design and web page design. Um, he won first place for his logo, and if they win the logo contest, then they use their logo for the entire next year for that competition. So he won first place in regionals and then competed at the state level in that event as well. We have Joel Motes. Joel was one of my high school division C, excuse me, division B competitors. So he was on the regional competition team and on the state competition team. And then last but not least, we have Megan Miller. 
Megan competed last year for me on the C Division Science Olympiad team. And this year, I would say we probably have one of the more interesting projects going on. Uh, we're doing a History Day project. For those of you that don't know, Megan is applying to the Naval Academy. And so we're doing a History Day project on the first women to do flight in at the Naval Academy or Naval mm -hmm. Flight. And we've had some wonderful contacts and she's gonna do firsthand interviews with at least two of the first six women and the husband of one of the six women. Unfortunately, she's passed away, but we're gonna be doing firsthand interviews and creating a project around that. Thank you for all your time. If you can see back here, I know not everybody is here, but we're recognizing 31 students tonight that are in the gifted program. This represents 77% of the students that I service in seventh through 12th grade, which I think is just phenomenal when you look at the numbers. Um, I'm extremely proud of their accomplishments. I'm looking forward to another great year with them. And I'd like to close with a quote that David Souter sent me in his most recent email. He said, if children are our future, our brightest children are going to create our destiny. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Sawicki. Uh, at this point, we will be going to an executive session. No. We have the oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I forgot we got the athletes. <laughs> we forget the athletes. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. McElwam. <laughs> Bring on the soccer players. All right. Well, <laughs> again, I won't take much of your time, but I do want to thank every one of you for everything that you do, not only for our students and our athletes, but it's kind of a thankless job sometimes being on the board member. And, and I've talked to several of you in, in different contexts and in the time and effort that you put in. I just want to thank you for everything that you do and the time that you put in and the support that you guys give our athletes and the community gives our athletes. Um, it's great. Like Waynesboro is a great place for our students and the, some of the support that we get in this community is tremendous. So I just wanted to say that. And also our coaches, I want to thank all our coaches. They put in a tremendous amount of time, not just during the season, but throughout the course of the year, working with these individual athletes. And um, it's great that we're going to have an opportunity to recognize some of the accomplishments that they've done. And I'm going to let the coaches speak to each of their teams and recognize some of their athletes. So first up, we have boys soccer and coach Brian Stump. Good evening. I'd like to reiterate what Mr. McWalm said and thank each and every one of you for the support that you give our athletes. Uh, this year, boys soccer had a challenging season. Uh, we ended up with a, uh, a record of two and six. Uh, but within our division, three of those teams are still playing the state playoffs. So, and Amanda uh, Seals. Very tough division. Uh, we Great. look forward to better things next year. That being said, this year we had two student athletes uh, make the all star teams. Uh, first is junior Will Boltz. Uh, Will made honorable mention uh, again in a very, very tough division. Uh, we had several All-State nominees as well. So uh, it just shows Will has a bright future in soccer if he sure, decides maybe. to pursue that. Uh, but as a coach, we're very, very proud of, of Will. Will Bolt. Second is a... Uh, is a young man I'm very fortunate to, uh, to live with. <laughs> and uh, he was our goalie this year. Um, if you watch our film, if you watch the film that uh, is going to be put together for our banquet that is coming up on Sunday night, uh, it was quite impressive. Uh, so that being said, Zach Stum made second team, first team goalkeeper, 
had a total of 10 shutouts. We did not quite have that achievement as a team uh, or nor him as an individual. But once again, uh, was a very close second recognized by the coaches within our division. Uh, Zach is looking to pursue a uh, Navy ROTC program at Penn State. So Zach's done. Thank you very much. So our, our next group up is our cross country group. And uh, sadly, they had their banquet tonight. So oh. <laughs> they had that planned well in advance. Um, but as you can see, we had a tremendous cross country season. Uh, we had, uh, I believe it was nine that, that moved on to uh, districts. And then we had two that just missed the state qualifying. So I'm actually gonna have them come back later if you don't mind, and we'll talk a little bit more about them. Um, and then with, with the recognitions, with the all-star recognitions, those are voted on by the coaches in the division. And our coaches can't vote for kids on our team so this is a recognition that's that's from you know other coaches watching our kids play all right uh, next up is going to be our cheer coach heather arstad Hello. Um, I also want to say some gratitude, but putting a little spin on it, being able to travel with the cheerleaders to um, the different football games and basketball games. Our facilities are amazing. And I was told by everybody, oh, you get to go to Hershey this year and the girls can cheer there. And it's going to be such an experience. Never did I think I would I have to dodge pretzel stands as I coach cheer. So um, thank you for all that you give to our athletes, but also our community, because our facilities are amazing and our kids are blessed to be able to be here. All right, um, I've got three girls who were unable to make it tonight, and I'd like to make sure that they get recognized. Freshman Mackenzie Fischel, um, sophomore Charlie Augenbaugh, and also sophomore Carmen Dominguez. These girls went to a United Cheer Association camp over the summer. We don't have an opportunity of being an all-star sport because we're so it's not just one cheerleader. You don't have one great person catching the ball or one great goalie like Zach being able to do his job. It is um, a team effort, 100% all the way through. But when we go to camp, they get an opportunity to be judged for the one and only time as an individual, and they can get selected as an all-American cheerleader. And that's what these individuals have done this year. So I have freshman Taylor Martinez. <laughs> And I have junior Alyssa Walker. And lastly, we have senior Melania Sullivan, who shared with me tonight that she thinks she's pretty much um, nailed down where she's gonna be going to college and she just might be cheering there too. So we'll see. <laughs> Like the all-star, it's not judged or picked by coaches. These were the um, college cheerleaders and the college cheer administrators who were at the camp are the ones that judged the girls and decided who were the criteria for this designation or not. It's a really, really big deal. Um, all across America, you'll see cheerleaders wearing sweatshirts that say all-American cheerleader. Just know if you see one, those girls earned it. It's not just something they picked up at a cool store or anything. Okay, thank you so much. Right, next up, we have our field hockey coach, Rebecca Steele. Hi, I am the new varsity coach um, for field hockey. Uh, Lisa Marshall this year was my invaluable assistant coach. And during our 2022 season, the girls made huge strides athletically. Um, we did not win any of our district games. We did win uh, four games outside the district. Um, we also, our competency and confidence improved with each game. And our biggest achievement as a team was finding our flow, making field hockey a faster, more enjoyable, exciting game, both for the girls to play and for the fans to watch. Um, so I have two girls, um, 
with me uh, for the all-star recognition, um, starting with Olivia Dingzen. Um, she's been chosen for the Colonial Honorable Mention. Um, Olivia significantly contained and prevented people from entering our circle. She could play left or right field, which made her an invaluable player and very versatile. Her ability to drive, jab, and read the appropriate approaching opponent set her apart and made her a key defensive player. So, Olivia. She also lives with me. <laughs> so, um, all right. Um, up next, um, um, Marley Myers has been chosen for the uh, second All Star team. Um, uh, this season, she scored, we scored as a team about 16 times, and she scored about half of those goals. So, um, uh, Marley's a midfielder, and she, um, was our lead scorer and she could offensively move the ball into the circle because of her great stick skills. Marley also played every second with an unmatched readiness. So Marley Myers. And thank you so much. Brian Fisher is not able to be here tonight as he's uh, out sick. So uh, Carrie Clothier is here to represent girls soccer, our assistant coach. Where's... Oh, there she is. All right, coach. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. And I have three out of my four girls here with me. And I'm going to start with Kiki Pryor or Kira Pryor. As we call it. She is our senior. And um, this year in soccer, um, we made a lot of good progress. And one of those reasons, because Kiki was one of the anchors of our defensive team and our core back there. Um, as a defender, you don't get many cool stats like scoring goals or having assists on the field, but you're just known for being um, determined and really hard to get past. Um, so Kiki was that and the other coaches voted um, for her to get um, on the second team. Um, so Kiki, congratulations. Our next one here is um, junior Gracie French and she had six goals and eight assists this season and um, played mostly in our midfield. And so she was coordinating a lot of our passing strings and she is just a force to be reckoned with there in the middle of the field. So she got on the honorable mention this year. Um, and then junior True Benshoff was also selected as our honorable mention. And this year she played mostly our forward position and she had 12 goals and three assists this year. So she was also a force we reckon with her and Gracie and our other candidate, uh, Nikki. They are just a great team coordinating there in the middle. It's really fun to watch. Um, so she got honorable mention, like I said. Congratulations. And lastly, Nikki Davis um, is a sophomore. She can't be here tonight, but she was selected second team as well. And she scored 15 goals with 12 assists this year. So again, they are just a dominating force in there. And we're really looking forward to next year and making more progress as a team. Um, but we're definitely going to miss our seniors. They were a very core part of our team. But like I said, we have a lot of things to look forward to. And um, we're excited about where girls girl soccer is headed. Thank you very much. All right, we got uh, next up is, is Coach Sprankle. He has his uh, players here for football. We'll get their certificates to him a little bit later. Thank you guys for hosting us. It's a pleasure to be here. We obviously thank everyone for their support from the board to the Waynesboro community. Um, obviously this year we were a younger team. We graduated 22 seniors last year. Um, pretty much most of our starting offense and defense 
it was gone. So we brought in new guys, but we had some returning veterans. Uh, first, in our first team defense was Michael Holden. He was unable to be here, but he was selected as a first team linebacker. Uh, Michael was a four year varsity starter from his ninth grade year. He came in and made an impact right away. So it was nice to see him finally get recognized as a conference all-star by the other coaches in the conference. Who we do have is Jalon Bean. Come on up here, Bean. <laughs> so just by looking at Jalon, you can tell he's an athlete. <laughs> no secret there. Jalon played quarterback for us primarily uh, for most of the year. He played defensive back. So he was guarding wide receivers. And then by week 10, he actually became a receiver himself. He was also an outstanding punter. He was recognized as a punting um, honorable mention and also as an overall athlete. I nominated him as an athlete and he got the honorable mention in that category as well. So thank you, Jalen. Jalen was also one of our team captains. So he's a great leader. Thank you. Caden Ditch is with us. What up, Caden? Caden was also a multiple year starter for us. He was one of our returning starters and earned the privilege to also be one of our team captains. Caden selflessly switched from number 11 to number 51 because we needed another offensive lineman, which was not his primary position. He was a defensive lineman and he actually got honorable mention as an offense and defensive lineman. So certainly he was uh, put his goals I'm out there and really achieved them. So I'm really proud of Caden's effort this year. Thank you, Caden. Marcus Smith was another, another one of our honorable mention defensive linemen. He's not with us either, but Marcus was a three-year starter and um, he did a tremendous job and received that recognition as a defensive lineman. The other student athlete that we do have is Andrew Sof. And I should mention that coach Erica Vincent on Deco is also here. She is our punting and kicking coach. So she coaches year round with our punters and kickers. She works with Jalon and brought Andrew to us, who is a former, he's our soccer golf kicker because he was a so he played soccer and was on the golf team this year and also kicked for us. <laughs> so we're super proud. And I was a little skeptical because Andrew is not really big and I was used to Jalon kicking and he's big. And so I was like, okay, we'll see. And Andrew, all of a sudden watching him, it was very impressive. Uh, two of our three wins this season were won 13 to 10 bit off of Andrew's right foot. Um, <laughs> so that was really exciting to have him. And we'll have him again next year because Andrew's only a junior. So our field goal uh, future is looking pretty good. So thank you, Andrew. So certainly, as I said, we had a young football team this year. We started eight sophomores and two freshmen. So the future for our football program is definitely bright. And two of the three teams that we beat won their first round district playoff games. So it shows that these guys really competed um, in each and every game. So thank you very much for having us. And our last team up is going to be our 40 one and one coach 41 and one this year with the golf team with their third straight uh, championship. So coach Ryan Henderson. <laughs> Oaks, how, how are you doing? Everybody you doing good? You look good. Good to see y'all. Hi, Ralph. Sorry. Uh, well, essentially, um, I'm a short guy here. Uh, our team was pretty successful and has been Honestly, for the last four years, we've won our division the last four years in a row. Um, this year, we did finish 41 and one uh, during that Greencastle to be up at, at the Greencastle Greens. You folks know that golf course, I think. Um, <laughs> that, that was our one loss this year. But essentially, over the last four years, uh, we have won our division, as I said, and we are record right now over that four year time period. We have 124 wins and only three losses. Wow. So our team has been very, um, well, we've been blessed as a group. I've been blessed as a coach to have these kids. And uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm very thankful to, to be part of this. Um, and also being thankful, I also want to back up and thank the country club as well for uh, 
supporting our program, you know, and we're out there pretty much daily in the fall and uh, the guys are great. The staff is great and they treat us very, very well. So I'm very thankful to be out there at the club. A second club I want to acknowledge is the Alice Club. The Alice Club has been very supportive of us. They bought us five brand new golf bags this year, um, which the kids broke in just fine. <laughs> and uh, they actually already gave us uh, some money for next year's uh, golf jerseys. So the Alice Club has been very supportive as well. As well. So thank you to the Country Club and the Alice Club. Uh, we get a lot of great support from those folks. So thank you to those, those, uh, those clubs. Um, so as I said, uh, we've been very successful. We are the smallest varsity team at this school, and we've been the most successful of any fall, winter, or spring sport in those last four years. So we are very, uh, and generally, generally I don't brag, but I'm going to brag a little bit because that's, that, that's pretty good. Um, so I'm thankful for my team. Uh, not only are they uh, a good bunch of kids, but they're, they're quality golfers. And, and Coach Sprinkle, I'm sorry, but we have to share – Andrew next year because he's going to be a pretty good player for me next year too. So, all right, thanks. Um, so, but last thing I want to say, I gave almost everybody uh, an, an honor roll uh, certificate tonight. And so essentially honor roll uh, students and players, Andrew Sof, Lincoln Gundacker, honor roll with high, with high honors, Marissa Mussolino, Ryan Schaefer, and honor roll with distinction was Evan Stein and Tyler Fortney. So not only are they quality players, they're also good. Well, I guess I'll, I'll stop you after now. Thank you all very much. Have a good night. And our last uh, fall sport, uh, volleyball has not selected their all-stars yet, so they'll they'll get put onto the winter docket. So, again, I want to thank everyone for, for all your support and everything that you, get, you do for not only our athletes but this entire community. So, with that, I'll say, athletes, we'd like to get a picture up in the hallway here. Uh, and then if you want to come back for the board meeting, you can again. <laughs> we'll go. But thanks again. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me. I'm going to jump in here real quick. Um, we had one student that was missed. So we're going to give her the biggest applause of all when I call her up here. <laughs> I believe she appeared on the screen, but she does not have a certificate. And I was reading from the certificates. So um, when we competed in the regional science Olympiad, that was on March 25th, and then the state date gets set. And I'm proud to say, just like Mr. McElwam says, we have a lot of student athletes and we have a lot of kids involved in multiple things. And there were some students that could not go on to the state competition. So we had to ask some other students to fill in in their place. And Liz Calloway was one of those students. So she was on our state science Olympiad team and she competed in two events. And I'd like to have her come up and be recognized and we'll give her a round of applause. Thank you. All right, so um, as we had noted that we would like uh, photos taken um, in the lobby area and we'd like to congratulate all our, our learners for their outstanding um, achievements. And again, um, apologies if uh, certificates were missed. We'll make sure that those are delivered uh, to the schools tomorrow. Thanks a lot and have a great evening. Okay. So now we will be going to an executive session. Uh, should be pretty short if anybody's coming back or would like to stay. Uh, so we will, you can stay. We'll go back behind the stage. We'll, we'll be back. back. Yeah, we're going to go back. Okay. Uh, board reports. Uh, so what do we have? Anybody, any, any uh, committees? Take it away, Mrs. Sullivan. Okay. Oh, Tomorrow we have policy committee at two upstairs. 
at Clayton. Next month, we're meeting December 13th. And from then on for the rest of 2023, it will be the third Thursday at one o'clock. Tomorrow it's at two. Okay. Um, what we're gonna talk about at the next, I don't know how much we'll get done tomorrow, but on our list is the final copies for dress code for students and staff. Donations. I'm sure, I'm sure that's a final. Well, I hope it's <laughs> yes, this will be the final. Okay, let's check. Uh, donations, admissions of students, field trips, metal detectors, the process of painting buildings and murals, and probably December, maybe January, we'll, we're going to go back to the discussion on therapy dogs. <laughs> Okay, uh, any other reports? Budget is meeting next Monday, the 14th at 5.30 p.m. And then facilities is meeting Tuesday, the 15th, also 5.30 p.m. I believe that one is at Fairview. That one's gonna be meeting at Fairview. An academic will meet on the 30th at 10.30. And personnel met yesterday. Okay, all right. Um, uh, student rep who would like to speak today. Riley's the winner. All right, so I'm going to give you guys a couple updates about how my last two weekends were. I have not seen my parents for a solid 24 hours this past week. So I don't know if that's a good thing for them or a bad thing, mm -hmm. but I've been out of town. So I'm loving it, loving the freedom. They're there like, oh, there she goes. <laughs> there she's down the driveway again. All right, so first I wanna give you an update about Kalahari. So we did travel with FBLA to Kalahari the weekend of Halloween. So we got there around Saturday, around evening time. So we were anxiously ready to go to the water park. And then they're like, oh guys, we changed trick-or-treating. So now you get to go trick-or-treating. So we went trick-or-treating, had a ball, you know, and then we went to the water park. Boring, I know, but fun part, workshops, <laughs> learning. So the workshops, we had a really great speaker, keynote speaker with Mr. Patrick Grady. His energy really brought us up and he taught us some valuable things. Um, so for FBLA, I'm doing a competitive event in public speaking. So he taught, did a workshop about public speaking, overcoming your fears, blah, 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 blah. So I learned a lot of it from him. Don't say blah, 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 blah. He would yell at me, but it's okay. Um, but he taught me the confidence and also the energy that you have to have and bring. And if you have energy, nobody can deny you. So we're going to like get the energy flowing and y'all can't deny me. You get to hear me talk. <laughs> All right. But other than that, the other workshops are really fun. Learning, learning a lot about leadership, how to become a better leader, but with before leading, you have to have your members first and you have to guide your members. And you are not anyone as a leader without your members. If you don't have any membership, then you're not gonna be a good leader. So that was one of the big takeaways is like the members are gonna be always the heroes and we're just the guide. So the leaders are just the guide. Um, with student council conference, that was this past weekend. That was a little bit of a difference for me we were in dress pants and dress shoes and our hair didn't have to be done. So walking in in jeans, I thought I was gonna be with everyone else. They were in sweatpants. So I was like, oh, I'm overdressed. <laughs> then, but then we got in and we did some icebreakers that involved us singing and copying Penn State chant of the paw, 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 that's what we did. And then we did some more icebreakers and we really got to know everyone by singing and dancing. And none of them wanted to hear any of us sing or dance. We had two good singers and then there's me did not fit in with the good singers. Not in the music department or art department guys. And then we did do some other fun activities resulting in games and meeting people, of course the normal, Hi, my name is Riley. Tell yourself an interesting fact. I'm a 12th grader and I really hate doing this about myself. <laughs> I hate saying an interesting fact because I talk a lot and I get nervous. So that was my interesting fact. And they all laughed at me and laughed at me. 
And then <laughs> that was my update. We had a lot of fun laughs and singing and nobody wanted to do that. But we did learn a lot, and Miss Banky and Miss Bittner were really awesome, and we're going to bring really great stuff back. So I'm excited to see what the future of student councils will be. Right, and then an update with on a little bit of a reverse turn. So there is more scholarships available now. They have updated the scholarship website. So with all of that, we have new and improved scholarships that are going to be available for our seniors. And then Junior Civ Civitam. I saw in Krispy Kreme donuts. So who doesn't love donuts? They're starting to sell those. I know I'm getting in line to get Krispy Kreme. But then there's the, is Crumpies better? Or is Krispy Kreme better? We gotta weigh our options here. And then we did have the cap and gown process starting, which is bittersweet. It's sitting here in the auditorium, seeing people walking in cap and gowns, knowing in less than six months that's gonna be. So that was exciting, but also scary. Shed a few tears. But I got really cute graduation shoes, guys. <laughs> I got an excuse to go shopping. So that was the exciting part to the downside of seeing the cap and gowns. <laughs> Other than that, that's all for you guys tonight. I, I have a question. Are you 18 by chance? I am. Did you vote today? No, I tried. So I was not found in the system, guys. You went, could, to, you went to vote? No. So I did the registration online yeah. to register. Yeah. And I did it on the 23rd, which the deadline was the 24th, procrastinator. Mm -hmm. But that's my birthday. So I thought to, in order to vote, I had to be 18. But as long as you're 18 before the election, you can register when you're 17, which uh, I didn't know. Okay. So for everyone out there, you can register before you're 18. So okay. when I did it on the 23rd, they couldn't find me in the system. Huh. So I tried and tried and tried multiple different things. I mean, I clicked all through each and every party to see if maybe it was because I, I was not meant to be a Republican. And that was not the issue. They could not find me in the um, system. So did, do they do voter cards anymore? Like, do people get a voter card? I don't. Like, I don't does anybody know the answer to that? Because because uh, used to be, you, I mean, it used to be you would right. like that was proof that you were registered. Mm -hmm. So I maybe I got a thing to register at the online. So I would typed in the thing, followed the guidelines, yeah. went to the thing, hmm. and then I said, "Here's my social," and then it said, "You are not found in the system." Okay. So I was sad. I was like my first big 18 thing to do. Well, so I'm just curious, like, did anybody talk about it today? Or did, I mean, like, did anybody talk about the election today? Not. Okay, so I'm only in the building, like, two periods with, like, actual learning. I have a study hall in between there. Yeah. Um, but Mr. Brett, my second period teacher, I love him. He brought it up. He said, who's all 18 in here getting ready to vote? And we had a lot of people that were 18, but I knew maybe... Half of them were and half of them weren't. Yeah. So I was one of the ones that was not. But I so, wasn't found. So River, how about you? Did you hear anybody talking about the election today? Nothing. Are you in a, a what are you, a junior? You're in American history then? Oh. oh, okay. Okay. I was just wondering if they talked about it. So you're not taking a social studies class then? Riley, you're done, like no psych or anything? Okay. okay. I was just wondering because I, you know, it would be nice to, um, yeah, it would be nice to to think that we were emphasizing that, you know, it's it's. But if you're not in the social studies classes, it probably wouldn't happen. So okay, too bad. Just curious. Thanks. I was excited. You well, get, next I time, two more years. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be the big one. That's the one you really have to wait in line for. Well, yeah. usually lately. Um, so okay. Thanks. Or school board election is next year, yes. so you can vote yes. in that one. <laughs> really? Yes. Well, hey, okay, guys, I'm going to vote for all of you. Well, <laughs> okay, fun, fun fact, you went off. You went Riley. Off. Waynesboro had the youngest school board member in Pennsylvania history. Oh, well, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hardman taught me some Waynesboro history, and it got us out of running laps in gym, so I was like the gym queen for like two minutes. Wow. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right, uh, on to business items. First one is a student waiver, Dr. Snerheim. Thank you, Mrs. Harold. Um, the recommendation is to approve the student waiver as discussed in executive session. I move to approve. Second. Any follow-up questions, Dr. Snerheim? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Okay, personnel, Dr. Sternheim. Thank you, Mrs. Hare. I'd like to direct your attention to the personnel items. Uh, we have resignation of two support, I'm sorry, two, resignation of two professional staff members, resignation of support staff, uh, reassignment of support staff, appointments of support staff, appointments of substitute staff, and continuing um, resignation of support staff, appointment of support staff, and we also have uh, three uh, professional uh, recommendations uh, for mathematics teacher at the Waynesboro Area Middle School, um, a first grade position at Hooverville Elementary, and a long-term sub-position that will be serving in two different capacities, one at WAMS and one at um, um, Summit View Elementary. Recommendation is to approve as listed. Motion? Move to approve. Second. Questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, school psychologist, that's you again, Dr. Sternheim, right? Thank you, Mrs. Harold. Um, I had placed this information as well as Mrs. McDonald and Mrs. Uh, Richards um, in terms of offering the opportunity to have a school psych intern. Um, it is a unique situation in the sense that um, most internships um, at least in the past, have not been paid. Um, so uh, we have done some research in surrounding areas and in light of the fact that school psychologists are um, very limited at this point, um, this is an opportunity to bring a school psychologist in as a one-year intern. Um, and during the course of that time, we will utilize the ESSER funding to uh, pay for a stipend uh, with the understanding that hopefully uh, it would be a great fit for the district and essentially we will be growing our own. So uh, what we're asking um, for, for board permission at this point is to circulate this information or advertisement. We will be conducting um, the interviews in, in January and hopefully be able to secure an applicant um, that would then also be board approved in order to receive the stipend. Motion? To approve. Second. Questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ready? On to idea pass. That's Mr. Holton. Yes, ma'am, it is. Take Thank it you. Okay. So we have two different agreements here. These are long-term, long-existing federal grants that come through, primarily they come through our IU and they provide basically an offset to our IU costs. So one's used for basically early intervention, kindergarten, and the other one is used to offset most of our schedule A or a good bit of our schedule A costs that are coming from the IU. So again, every year we typically approve these, we use that to offset our costs with the IU and that's been the typical process. Motion. Move to approve. Second. Questions for Mr. Holtzman? Since this is passed through, we're not going to see it against our budget line items. Uh, well, actually, it's interesting. We'll actually see it as revenue, but then we see it um, offset. No, okay, we see it exit yeah. right away. Okay. Yeah, we'll see it actually both ways, though. We call it an offset, but you'll see it both in revenues, and then we have the offsetting expense. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, you're welcome. Anybody else? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, now for the FCATB budget, Mr. Holtzman. Yes, ma'am, thank you. This is the uh, Franklin County Area Tax Bureau. They are tasked with collecting earned income tax for all of Franklin County. This goes back to Act 32. It's a requirement that counties consolidated their um, tax collection process. Annually, they have to come back to all of the participating uh, entities, which includes all the municipalities in Franklin County, as well as the school districts. And so their requirement by the Tax Collection Committee, which is technically a higher authority board from Act 32. So Act 32 has a tax collection board. We are also participants in the tax collection board. That one's a weighted vote though, based on the size of your district and how much EIT you collect. So predominantly the Tax Collection Committee is run effectively voting wise by all the school districts. But at the FCATB level, it's one entity, one vote. So it doesn't matter if you're to Boyne Township and they have, you know, one tenth of one percent of uh, you know the EIT, they also get one vote as well. So, effectively, what happens is the Franklin County Area Tax Bureau presents a budget each year, and their requirement is to stay under the two point two percent for a collection rate. Historically, they've always been able to do that successfully. This budget here pushes it close to that two point two percent for two reasons. One is 
they're very conservative with their revenues. They're not anticipating growth in revenues next year, even though traditionally we see um, increases in revenues just because of inflation. So that kind of keeps that um, a little bit lower number. It's more conservative. The other piece is they have to hire some additional staff because they have some very long-term employees who are retiring. And it's a long lead time. It's a small department. They need some more time to get these new folks trained so that they can go ahead and make that transition when they retire. But we don't see any risk at this point with the 2.2%. And, and then there is a second piece, and I don't know if you want me to do this piecemeal or not. But I was wondering, maybe we're going to look at number two there. Sure, if that's okay with you. Sure. Then. So um, it, as the district, you also appoint representatives. You can appoint anyone to be the representative. Um, I've been your representative, and uh, Caroline Royer from Greencastle has actually been the backup because, again, the schools kind of have a vested interest in these programs from a cost perspective. Um, and then typically I've reversed that. I'm usually their alternate for Greencastle. But the board can elect um, to have anybody actually represent them. It could be a board member. It could be anybody in the community if you so desire. So just to let you know that you have that flexibility. Um, but also as part of this, um, as a, the same motion or different motion, we would ask to basically reappoint me. And then I did talk to Ms. Royer. She's willing to continue to be the alternate at this point. And she lives here locally. I think many people might be familiar with her as well. So, Okay, so you're suggesting this can be done as one or do we have to separate it? Um, okay. I, I would suggest separating we'll it just in case, okay. just in case there's a difference yep. on voting. Sure. Yep. Okay, so the first motion then would deal with the, um, the rate. Anybody care to make a motion to approve that? Move to approve the budget rate for the FCA TB. Okay. Second. Any other questions on that particular motion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. And now for the second one, which would involve. Hold Mr. on Holt. one second. I got to have everybody vote. What happened? You have to get everyone to vote. So I can... Okay. Good to go. Okay, so now we need a motion on the second item, which is appointing Mr. Holtzman and Caroline Royer as the uh, alternate. To approve Mr. Holtzman as the representative and Ms. Royer as the alternate. Okay. Second. Any questions on that? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. On to Dr. Klein and articles of agreement. The articles of agreement are the uh, Franklin County Career and Technical Center uh, terms of how they operate. They've been in place since the start of the uh, Career Center. Uh, that's, uh, as you know, uh, is a uh, the the four or five districts that are members uh, are have represent representatives on that board. And the again, these articles have been updated uh, recently. And with those updates, uh, actually, some of those updates, I believe they were actually practicing, but updating them to make sure we're um, they're in the articles of agreement. But the, again, they're the terms of operation for the career center. So we ask that the administration ask that you that you approve the uh, current and new articles of agreement. Motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Here's an oldie but goodie. Playground water <laughs> mitigation project. Mr. Holtzman. Thank you very much. This has been a long term, uh, long time in coming. So this is to, uh, you know, for anyone who may not may not be familiar with this, this has been a project that's been multiple years in the making. Um, but the main issue we have is at Maui Elementary, we have a stormwater issue with water above the playground area that comes down and literally washes the mulch away from the playground. And I mean, when I say literally, it truly does take it with any major storms, it just takes that mulch out. So that creates a safety hazard for that playground. Um, so it becomes a maintenance issue trying to get mulch back into there. That's not always very successful, but it does create a, a maintenance issue and a safety issue for our students. Um, we've looked at this probably at least six, seven years, maybe, I think off and on at times. And um, Initial quotes we had a couple of years ago were getting close to the six figure mark. Um, and that was several years ago. We got a little concerned. So what we did is we did bring an engineer in, they came out and they took a look at it. 
looked at what to do to mitigate this. And effectively what this would do is this would put in additional stormwater management to take the water and move it away from the playground. It will literally then go underneath some piping, go underneath the playground and go out into that very large field we have there going over towards uh, Tomstown Road, I believe, if I have that road correct. Yeah. So, um, and so the idea there would be that the stormwater would come in, that would hit those grates, it would go underneath the playground and then go out into the field. Um, and then the mulch would stay where the mulch needs to stay, which is underneath of the equipment. Um, we were very pleased. We had two quotes or two, two bids. Um, we had one uh, local one here that came in at $52,000. And again, we were very concerned this was going to come in significantly higher than this price here. Um, we feel that uh, this is probably the best rate we could get at this point. Um, we will have to come back to you with um, some additional mulch at some point once this is all over with. Uh, the plans would be if this is approved to do this during the summer of 23. So it's not an issue for the school year this year. Um, they really need that time to dig up through the playground. It's just not going to work while we have school in session. All right. Uh, motion. Motion to approve. Very happily. Second. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very okay. happy. Questions? <laughs> I will make a comment, being that I was around for that six figure. In fact, as I recall, the project was about $150,000. Yeah. So I don't know who these people are, but I'm glad they're willing to do it for, you know, a third of what our original estimate. So uh, good, good for them. Okay, anything else, anybody? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. All right, on to the consultation with CSIUACA, whoever that would be. Is that you again, Mr. Holtzman? Yes, ma'am. Sorry. Okay, take it so, away. Um, CSIU is our uh, financial and HR software. Probably, I want to say 200, 250 school districts in the state use this software package. We have actually kind of taken some um, packages away from that over the time. For example, we used to um, have an inventory and a fixed asset system with them. We used to use procurement through them. Over the years, we've actually kind of pulled away some of our resources from them. Um, so our cost with the whole project has actually come down with CSIU. But one thing, unfortunately, they've kind of now decided to take away from all the school districts is that um, we used to be able to do the Affordable Care Act reporting. These are those 1095 forms that you might receive each year from your employer. If, you know, for those of you that are still um, working, if you're uh, not retired, but the, um, those forms, we have to go through and we're required to provide those forms. Nobody does anything with them, but we're required as an employer to provide those forms. And we need um, our financial and HR software to go through there to be able to create those forms because it has to link into the insurance benefits. So that it becomes a specific issue where we have to make sure that the employee and their dependents and that information that is all reported into the IRS. But again, our understanding is nobody really does anything with it other than we do this, we print out the sheets, we report it to the IRS. So I'm saying all that to say that unfortunately CSIU is changing their functionality a little bit and we can't get that directly out of the system the way we did in the past. What we have to do is get a data file basically coming out of the CSIU system and we had two different options. Option one was um, using another vendor. The cost was about $6,700 to have them go through and do the work. We found this other option here. It requires us to do a little bit more work in the business office, but not that much. And it's only $2,000 and they're promising to keep it flat for three years. Um, and this product um, from Navigate HCR is joined in with CSIU. So they'll be able to take their data feed and process it. But effectively it'll allow us to kind of do our reporting job with IRS. Okay, uh, motion. Move to approve. Second. Questions? Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, daycare van rental. Is that Dr. Sternheim, Mr. Holtzman, who would that be? Okay, Mr. Holtzman. Yeah, I can, Holtzman, yeah, I can okay. sorry. Um, so basically, we've had a, a long-term need with vans. We just don't quite have vans in our district. The board has very generously allowed us to buy two new vans. We're still waiting on those two new vans. So that, I think if you remember, that was six, seven months ago, possibly. Yeah. If you remember, we have contacted the contractor. There was only one bidder, if you remember. They're still waiting on parts from Mexico at this point is the latest. And we believe them. I mean, we're talking to other school districts. People are having a hard time getting vans right now. So we talked to the uh, Waynesboro Early Learning Center, and they have a van that they're willing to go ahead and rent to us, which is a blessing, certainly is. 
Um, so we have an agreement here for you um, at a rate of 650. We think that's very fair. Um, there's a mileage limit in there as well. Um, I would just ask for two items to uh, possibly change on here. One is to make sure and clarify this is what the Waynesboro Early Learning Center is the actual name. And if we could just also have the uh, additional miles, if we go over 70 to be charged at the IRS rate. So that does fluctuate a little bit. It's a little bit higher right now than that 55 cents, but that's okay because fuel has been driving that as well and the cost for maintenance and things of that nature. We did check with our insurance company. They will cover it for not only our drivers, but they actually will cover the vehicle itself. So we did double check with them from an insurance perspective. So that's a good thing. So if something were to happen, the district's insurance would cover that cost for both uh, liability and collision as well. And then um, as you'll note here, all of our van drivers are always approved by the um, district and we just continue that process as well for anyone who would use one of these vehicles for this vehicle. Okay, do we have a motion? Move to approve. approve. I'll second. Okay, uh, any questions? Comments? Just a quick question. It says the lease is per month. Does that mean we have to approve this each month then? I think the idea was that we would do this on a monthly basis flat wise, that okay. we would do it one month at a time okay. and do it that way, if that's okay. But that's a good clarification question. Yeah. I think just a point of information, I think the current IRS rate is probably what, 625? It is. Okay. It is. Yeah. And my and that went up mid year too. That, that yeah. and my guess the way things have been going, there's a good chance it'll go up again maybe in January. So yeah. Yeah. I think that would be more fair that way. At least it's a and it's a kind of a recognized number for maintenance and things of that nature. So mm -hmm. yeah. And again, that's only after 70 miles. So again, yeah. the first 70, we wouldn't have to pay anything for that. Well, I think it's very kind of them to be willing to rent that to us. So I do appreciate that. I sure hope no, nothing happens to it because they won't get a replacement for years. <laughs> that, that is a bit of a concern for everyone. <laughs> you know, so drive slowly, stay away from deer. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. So if there's nothing else, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Okay. And once again, on to business <laughs> items, Mr. Holtzman. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. We have uh, checks. We have both cafeteria general fund. We have also uh, purchase orders as well. As you notice, we're getting a little bit better on the purchase orders. We have one system now, it looks like at this place. So um, as the training has been progressing with SCVU, that uh, looks like we're getting that down to the one format instead of having two. And then there's also a repository sale there for $500. I believe that's a single wide trailer um, that the uh, county is asking us to approve for that sale. And then that gets it back onto the uh, tax books. Okay, motion to approve. Move to approve. Second. Any questions for Mr. Holtzman? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. On to Clayton comments. Anybody? I uh, just want to remind the board that if they would like to attend any of the uh, Veterans Day program, as you can see, Summit View Elementary has been busy setting up. They will be here tomorrow at 9.30. Um, we also have Maori tomorrow at 9.30. And Hooverville is uh, November um, 8th. Wait, what, no. Tomorrow's the 8th. Or tomorrow's the 9th. No, oh, so Hooverville must have had theirs today, I'm sorry, at 145. So I did have an opportunity to participate um, in the Fairview um, Veterans Day program. And as always, it's outstanding. Um, our students and our teachers and admin do an amazing job of recognizing the contributions of our veterans. So. Just in parent teacher is conferences. Here in the high school? Yeah. Hmm? Okay. Summit View's here. Yeah, because our gym is so big at Summit View. So we had to move. <laughs> <laughs> They're so be in the auditorium. It's yeah. right okay. here. It's, it's it'll be right here at 9 30. Okay. That's why there was limited, like we had all our spectators sit up front because we already have areas sectioned off. So I'm very appreciative that we had a cooperative audience this evening. Anything else? Lighten people? Okay, how about board? Any comments from the board members? Well, quiet week or so. I can just, I, it does my heart good when we do these recognitions to see all these athletes and academic winners. And you know, I, I'm moved every time. My, my eyes leak sometimes. I just, <laughs> you know, I think our kids are great. And this, this is one of my favorite board meetings when we recognize, you know, our, our learners. 
<laughs> our students. <laughs> students. <laughs> Recognizing our students. Students. Please don't call me a <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Riley. Please do not call me a <laughs> I owe you a cup of coffee. Yeah, That's right. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Before? <laughs> okay. If not, are we? Do we have to have an executive session, Dr. Klein? Or are no. we done? No? Okay. All right. So uh, we will be adjourning with no meet meeting afterwards. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Back in two weeks.